of others. But transition anxiety is a gripping counties amid concerns over the security of county assets and the fate of county staff. Already some governors have raised alarm over alleged theft and disappearance of county government property, while others have announced mass layoffs and suspension of staff. Trade unions are reading politics and vengeance in these layoffs, while governors are defending them as an inevitable house cleaning. Are governors justified in sucking or suspending their county workforce? Talk to us. The hashtag is a big question on Twitter. You can text us on double two four double two. We speak to Mudomi Juki, the newly elected governor of Tharakaniti County, and uh, Senator Moses Kajuang of Homa Bay County. Thank you so much for both for making time for us uh, tonight. I'll start with you. Uh, Mudomi Juki, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, uh, being elected in the governor of Tharakaniti County. You have already suspended about 1,000, if I'm wrong, if I'm not wrong, uh, workers in your county. Why? Why did you do this? Well, I want to say thank you, first of all, for giving me the opportunity to come to the studio. And I hope you didn't call me because I was picked as having uh, done what you've just <laughs> said. Uh -huh. I'll take this opportunity, of course, to thank the people of Tharakaniti for giving me the opportunity to serve. Yes, the allegation um, is bordering the truth. Uh, they may not be a thousand, they are very close to a Hundreds, thousand. Yeah. And uh, the bulk of them, about 600, are casual workers. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have those who, who are, I would call them, bordering very dangerous, the, the dangerous lines on, on, on employment. Because you cannot have anything like an open contract, which is not defined by time. It is not possible for you to have a contract that says open, it's not six months, it's not. not uh, uh, one year, it is not uh, five years, and basically we have not really sucked. We have just temporarily uh, told them to be on hold, and, and, and we investigate okay. what is the nature of the contract they have. Right. And the reason I'm doing this is because one of the biggest problems in Tarkanili County and why we are lagging behind in development is because we have a wage bill that is not sustainable. 65% of the budget of Tarkanili County goes to salaries. Out of the 3.7 billion that we received this financial year, 2.4 is supposed to go to salaries. And that is not the only recurrent expenditure. We have not looked at the issue of the filing of vehicles, of course, and running the offices per diems and all that. So it is necessary. I, I feel like a, a newsman who has to hang people and still have to <laughs> apologize for it. It is so not you're really doing it because of, 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 of the wage bill or because these people are incompetent? Or why exactly? It is a mixture of all those. We have... Um, of course, the wage bill is, is way, way up. It, it's 30 percent. And you know what the, 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 and the World Bank uh, recommended is the 30 percent of, of the wage bill. That 30 percent should be the threshold vis-a-vis -vis what is reserved for the development. Development should be, money for development should be 70 uh, percent and the, the wage bill should be around 30 percent. Okay. If you okay. talk about 65 percent, really, it's it a means problem. that count is not heading anywhere. It's a problem. It's been there. Um, you may be justified or not justified in what you're doing, but what should come first? Trying to do an audit, like you're saying, to investigate or whether they are deservedly there or suspending them first. What, sh what should come first? Oh, let me tell you. you. What I've just done is a tip of the iceberg. It has dropped in the ocean. Meaning there's more We stuff. are still going to wreck that workforce and ensure that we have only what is recommended by Ernest and Young. Because there was... Uh, there was a, a joint activity by the Minister of Devolution and TA that mm -hmm. happened in 2014. Mm -hmm. And they came up with the, what we call the capacity assessment for the public service. And the recommendation for every county, they were given what should constitute the workforce depending on the needs. And most of the governors did not implement it. And Tarakanidi County is one of them. Okay, I'll come back to you. Let's, let me get uh, Senator Kajuang's view on this first. Uh, thank you, Hussein. I'd first like to congratulate uh, His Excellency, <laughs> the Governor. Uh, Mulomi and I share an alma mater, and our maxim was nothing but the best, or mm -hmm. nihil praetor optimum. Uh, and, uh, I, I, I can see that uh, he's aspired for uh, nothing but the best. In the on national this, candidate, yes. It, <laughs> yes. <laughs> In, on this particular matter, the peculiarities of Tarakaniti County might be beyond my comprehension. Mm -hmm. But I will be guided by the Constitution 
and I will be guided by the County Governments Act, the two very important documents that any new governor should uh, use as a point of reference. Mm -hmm. First of all, the Constitution under Article 47 talks about fair administrative action. And so if you are going to undertake any action as a public officer or a state officer, you must ensure that there is fair administrative action. My brother, His Excellency, took the oath of office, if not four days ago, maybe it's uh, three days ago, or probably, uh, I think it was Friday. Uh, he, 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 I really struggle to believe that he has undertaken fair administrative action to get to the point where he has decided that there are some people who need to be laid off. The reasons he has brought up on wage bill are legitimate reasons that affect many of the counties because the first four and a half years, most of the counties were in transition. You had municipal uh, councils, you had uh, town councils all put up together to form county governments. And there was a lot of duplication. You had staff seconded from the national government. And all this has not been addressed. To address it is the best way is not by issuing edicts and roadside declarations. You know, in the last one and a half years, we are talking about devolved corruption. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I hope we are not talking of devolved dictatorship in the face or in the form of the govern governors rushing to make pronouncements. He is justified because the County Government Act and even the Constitution gives him the power as a governor to organize and to staff and to resource his county uh, to the level where he believes can help him to deliver on his manifesto and on his objectives. But he should not forget that each and every person in this republic has got the right to fair administrative action. That is why even in our households, you cannot just wake up and fire your house girl. Even in an organization, you cannot just wake up and fire somebody right. until and unless you have exhausted the administrative actions that have been spelled out by the different statutes. But even your powers are up to some level because uh, apart from the personal staff and advisors a, a, a county governor has, uh, the rest of public servants, uh, if you have a problem, it's usually referred to the public, uh, county public service board. Correct. Has that happened in your case? Because you just took office in, on Friday, and now you're talking about over 600 people already <laughs> being told are uh, suspended. I don't know if you've referred to the county service board. Yeah, first of all, let me thank my brother. He uh, reminded me that we went to the same school different times. Um, I want to put it very clearly to you that most of the workers that I'm alleged to have fired, because the, the idea really is not really firing. I've just suspended. Suspended, I've said, yeah. Is cash workers. Mm -hmm. Cash workers are not on contract. Cash workers are hired on need basis. And this is a problem that is rampant almost in every county where if we do not have centralized system of hiring cash workers, like in Kanidi, we have a system where every ministry used to hire their own cash workers. Really, there was no one who had a centralized team to be able to say, bring your needs for the cash workers, and we assess them and know how many we can be able to give you. Mm -hmm. And that has been abused. Because how do, you, how do you justify a situation whereby we had an audit report, which I brought today, it's here. And actually what I'm doing, I am imp imp simply implementing what my, my previous governor did. Yes. He, did, he, did, he instituted an audit, but he never implemented it. Instead, he put it on the shelves. But this, and, uh, this was, and, and with due respect, this was 2014. This, this was 2015. So 20, this was 2015. It's now 2017. And, and I have two reports, mm -hmm. which of course I read much before ahead of elections because I knew what was there. And I was, I was uh, hoping that he'll do something about it before I get there. So what I'm actually implementing is that audit report that says in 2015 we had only one, 182 cash workers. And two years down the line, we have almost 600 cash workers and nothing has increased in that county. The revenue collection has gone down from what you used to, to have in 2013. Why then would you be having more revenue collectors in that county? Then it means it's a problem. So I am, I am doing it so that the county can be able to benefit from the savings that will be made out of the same. And mm -hmm. we will still hire again the cash workers, but strictly based on need. We have to assess the need. And I can guarantee you, depending, according to what I've seen, right. they will not even get to a third of what, has been, what is there at the moment. So on what basis then did you relieve, suspend the, the over 600 or about 600 and leave the others? Why I not the no, others? I have suspended all of them. All, all casual and workers And I have asked the departmental heads now to bring their needs. And this has to be, of course, brought to the cabinet and we have to assess it and be able to 
to actually verify whether that need, and most of these actually are what we'd call ghost workers. They are hidden under the name casual. And even the way the salaries are paid for the cashews, because they're not on the payroll. We don't have any personal numbers, and even the ones that are lately have been on contract, they have no personal numbers. So in your case, you're not touching any public servant? The public, public servant, servant, not as yet. I'm, I'm yet to get there. Because we still have the, through the, 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 the public provide. service board, okay. we have to assess them and know how to go about okay, it. Let me get to uh, well, uh, Mudomi has a, an interesting task, because he has to deal with ghosts. And he has to deal with casual workers. He said he's, he started dealing with the ghosts. So sometimes it's very difficult to place a finger on it. <laughs> but I want to tell the employees in Tarakanithi County, uh, as a senator, because my role is to defend and protect devolution mm. and the interests of devolved governments, not just Toma Bay, but all the devolved uh, uh, governments. If you are employed uh, by the county government, any county government, you are protected because it is a county public service board that has got the responsibility to look into your issues. The County Public Service Board is your HR department within the county. And nobody else has got the power to unilaterally fire you. The positions where the governor can take unilateral decisions are clearly uh, stipulated in the County Governments Act. That is his executives, the governor can terminate the services of the, of the county uh, secretary, and the governor can also redeploy his chief officers. But when it comes to other people lower down in the establishment, we must allow the HR department, which is a county public service board, mm. to undertake its professional and legal duty. So I, if, you've, uh, if Mudomi has just kicked you out, without any due process, <laughs> just remember that you are protected. But he's saying, I think this points to a much bigger problem. When the president was in Makueni during the campaign duration, he was very upset with chiefs, and he said that some chiefs who were being provided with uh, facilitation by the central government mm -hmm. were not campaigning hard enough for Jubilee or were outrightly campaigning for the opposition. This feeling that when I become governor, all employees must be beholden to my political uh, ideology and political philosophy. I think it is a fallacy that we need to bring to an end. And some governors have been explicit about this. For example, we've seen what has happened in CIA, for instance. Do you support that yourself? Def definitely, the, the, there is due to be misinterpretation depending on the body language of the governors when they speak about this. I cannot wake up and fire people based on their political ideologies or beliefs. It is, it is nonsense. You cannot do that. Because as a governor, you, you are the governor of everybody in the county. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter their political affiliations or even if they are political in this particular case. Right. So I cannot support any governor who fires people depending on what side of the divide they were in during the Regardless of, of the level of it, a, it, 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 it doesn't matter. Because governors are also heading political uh, government. And I want, to give you a, counties. I want to give you a very interesting scenario. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I think my scenario and the one of the new governors, we are, we are basically taking the bull by the horns. But we have governors who, who are employed, and now they are, they are firing the same people they, they employ. <laughs> How would you be able to explain that? Because they, they must have realized somewhere on the way, uh, some, some wrongs were committed, or rather irregularities during the hiring. They could do anything about it that time because of the election period, because of, of course they want to protect... Uh, uh, what, what I would say they are political toughs so that they don't lose the vote. But the moment the election, elections are over, they are to make, do what was right. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you in this particular case, looking at this report, I think my governor, if, if he came back, he would have fired more people than me because he even knows how they were, they were hired, some of them, who were hired irregularly. Mm -hmm. As for me, I am just following the reports that I'm getting from HR departments okay. because they, they put it very clearly to you. Yes, we do have people who I was forced to hire without following due, due process. And I asked them, why did you hire them? Because right. they say, when the boss speaks, the boss is right. And, and I say, how would, was it put in writing? They say, yes, it's in writing, but it did not follow the due process because I don't have any recommendation from what we call the H, Human Resource Advisory Committee, okay. which is very, very critical in employing. So how do government, governors work around this? You can also respond to this. Well, start with, with you, uh, uh, Moses. Um, Governors, I mean, are also heading political governments at the counties with specific uh, deliverables that they have to deliver within the next five years. Definitely, they were not working in a vacuum. When they were campaigning, they had people that they thought they could work with them. So what is the problem with employing those people? And if you had people in counties who were working in the counties before you came there, who are not seeing uh, or who are not in your camp, not seeing what you want to deliver within the five years, 
Will you just be forced to work with them? Or are you okay in sucking them? Uh, yeah, we're saying, first of all, the active and open involvement of public officers in political campaigns and activities is a violation of the law. We have said that. We have seen uh, members of the cabinet. We have seen permanent secretaries. We have seen public officers at the county level actively campaigning. If uh, Mudomi finds people who are actively campaigning for and against him, there are procedures, disciplinary procedures, for determining whether someone is guilty, and such person should either be reprimanded or kicked out. There, I think, he's got a right and, uh, you know, is allowed under the law to take action. Mm -hmm. But how then do governors deal with this situation where every, everyone uh, has a lot of expectations on you and you've got a, a, a public uh, service that you did not recruit? Okay. I think, number one, uh, there's a lot of duplication at the county level. Most of the counties, I don't know about Tarakanithi, but a, a county like Homa Bay, there are almost seven different uh, councils, municipal councils, town councils, that were amalgamated. So there's a lot of redundancy. I wish the governors would start not just by kicking people out, but by harmonizing the different functions and departments within those counties. That is a power that has been given to the governor. It is a power that has been given to the county executive committee. Mm -hmm. I wish that uh, the governors would first sit, the not even appointed their county executive committees and you know the executive power is vested in the county executive committee where the governor sits. If they could set their county executive committees, then they look at the different departments and functions and structures within those counties. They do some streamlining and some harmonization. Mm -hmm. Definitely you'll find cases where people are doing duplicate roles. Then on the basis of that and aided by audit reports like the one Domi has, mm -hmm. they can take definite action that will solve the problem from the root cause rather than just scratching the itch. All right. There are also concerns, you respond to that, but there are also concerns that outgoing county uh, officials could be taking advantage of the confusion now in transition. We had this in 2013, and when we are moving from local governments, the municipal uh, councils and town councils, moving to county governments, the issue of assets and how do you safeguard them? Are you having a problem with that again? Definitely, I have a big problem with that. We the other day we called for all the vehicles to be assessed physically. We, we had situations where vehicles for the government or county government were used in campaigns. They just uh, changed the, the number of plates and used them. Of course, you can be able to identify those people who knew them. Mm. And we called for all the vehicles. And the most amazing thing is that uh, you find senior officers like uh, CECs come driving themselves, yet they have designated drivers. But the most shocking th thing was when we had drivers that were four times the number of vehicles. Uh, coming back to the begging question of whether were they employed based on need or they were employed to, to actually be able to serve some purpose, like, uh, like maybe a political purpose. I give you a job and you campaign for me. Th those are there. Of course, we have the, the, the issue of uh, the, the county assets like the land where we, we have places we can't be able to pin down where the, the titles are placed. And of, of, and of course, we have circumstances where even in the offices, mm -hmm. you find where offices that look like they've been they were vandalized, uh, even uh, hardware, leave alone uh, uh, small issues like uh, the record that you, you, you would find in the office. I switched on my, my PC in the office of the governor, and it's like as good as new. Yet, uh, no, a few years earlier, it had information that would be useful to the next governor who was coming to that office. And those are issues that really should be addressed. Because the transition period should be a time when people should inherit the, the goodwill from the, the other governors. You, you, you forget the differences and, and forge forward. And I want to commend Governor Kidero and a, and a few other governors like uh, the former governor of Kiambu, Kabogo, who actually went for... For the, for the negration and mm -hmm. hand it over and, and give the governor the goodwill because really we have a, a country to run much after, after the elections are gone. Okay. And that is one of the biggest problems in transition. Right. Yeah, Hussein, uh, I must uh, bring uh, the name of Senator Matangi, who is my colleague, who, at, who foresaw this uh, particular issue and attempted to craft legislation that would make the transition process smooth, smooth. and easier. Yeah. Unfortunately, we received a lot of uh, uh, opposition from the Council of Governors, but uh, with the new governors like Mudomi, I'm, I'm sure that uh, now that they've seen the complication, we will get more support uh, for, for Senate's effort to streamline that process. The issue of assets and liabilities has been a recurring audit issue for us who sit in the Senate. Many of the counties do not have a register of assets or a register of their liabilities. 
You can imagine running a business without knowing your assets and liabilities. And there's a historical problem. We had the transition authority whose mandate ended before it concluded the listing of assets and liabilities of the counties. And then this was handed over to the uh, Professor uh, Karega uh, 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 yeah, the Professor Karega team. The matter has not been concluded in a manner that satisfy all stakeholders when it, in, in the devolved uh, government uh, setup. Mm -hmm. So the issue of assets and liabilities is still a matter of concern and I hope we'll be able to crack it when the new Senate and the new Council of Governor, Governors come in. But for cases where uh, you can clearly see people, uh, governors who are there um, and, and, and employees who are there previously doing things that uh, look like they're uh, expropriating uh, assets of county governments. I mean, there are laws to deal with that, theft by servant and, and, and several other uh, issues with, with areas within the penal code right. that can be used to bring them to account. Okay. Uh, Hassan in Mandera on Double Two Four Double Two says, county executives and chief officers require legal protection and the first casualty uh, CEC fired as soon as the election result of Ali Roba was announced. That is allegedly okay. Uh, Amuyunzu in Vihiga says, you mean Mutua and others did not know who they employed and what they were doing? The buck stops at their desk. That is after Mutua, of course, also suspended some employees. Uh, David in Langata says, governor's actions are ill-timed and an avenue for promoting corruption, nepotism, and tribalism. Some are being said to hire their own uh, cronies, friends, and relatives must be handled in a transparent way by a professional human resource firm. Both of you talked about that, of course. Uh, we have Nancy in Nairobi says, congratulations, governor full of confidence. The youth of is finally in good hands. And in Embu, Michael Kariuki says, Hussein, let the governor know that Kenya is governed by law, that is law, labor laws dated 2007, and ILO Convention, Employment and Labor Relations Court is wide open to solve this matter. Let the governor know Kenya is out of victimization of the worker. This is dictatorship fully. And on Twitter, Bukemba Gashoki says, you do not have to trust everyone. Change is change from office furniture to staff to any other thing that needs change. To our guests, thank you so much for making time for us tonight. Governor Mugomi Juki of Farakaniti County and Senator Moses Kajuang of Homo Bay County. Keep talking to us. The hashtag is a big question on Twitter. You can text us on double two for double two. We're back after this break. <laughs>